Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome to our Coffee Times. Today I'm here to talk to you about two of the latest horror releases on Netflix. So I watched the last two horror movies that they released that really looked interesting and I'm just here to give you my spoiler-free review. It's coffee time! So I was actually expecting his house at the end of October and that was on my list of movies that I wanted to watch. However, they also released another one in October that I was not expecting, which is Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. So I decided to watch both of them and then we can all talk about the movies um, now that especially we're gonna get bombarded with Christmas movies. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy myself a month of Christmas movies <laughs> sometimes but um, I am gonna miss the spooky month a lot so before we go to the reviews if you love horror horror movies horror collectibles please consider subscribing to the channel and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more coffee times let's talk about the Polish movie nobody sleeps in the woods tonight so this is a movie that it is supposed to pay homage to the American slasher movies but how much is copying and how much is kind of bringing something new to the table taking those ideas so the movie is based on camp adrenaline and at the beginning I thought that was actually a really cool modern idea, modern take on this type of camps. So teenagers are basically sent by their parents to this camp to detox from electronics, from your laptop, from internet, from your phone. And I thought, hey, this is like a nice, interesting take on sending teenagers to a camp where they might get slaughtered. However, that doesn't last too long. Quickly, the teenagers are split into groups and they're assigned a leader. And we follow one of these groups only with a very strong, funny female leader. And you have all the tropes in the world. We have, you know, the smart one, the hot one, the nerd. We have the pretty girl. So they are really heavy on tropes in this movie. It's something that we're going to see throughout the whole movie. They do take some time to build up the story, the little story that we have because, you know, it's a slasher. So basically there's not too much of a storyline too much of a plot really um and they are trying to get the viewer to see who these people are to try to kind of care for them a little bit so that in the end you will actually care or fear for their lives when they start dying the movie was very campy it had a lot of humor um you will see sex you will see boobs you will see some gore and the thing that kind of bothered me was the score like the songs that were chosen at certain moments i just thought they were not really fitting certain scenes and it kind of bothered me so i just wish they wouldn't kind of taken this score as a joke or i think they were trying to use like a fun typical slasher background music something i don't know but it didn't really work out for me at some point of the movie i started to ask myself if this was just a parody sort of thing of Friday the 13th because there were so many things that reminded me of Friday the 13th and there is even a death in this movie that is kind of copied from one of the most like known iconic deaths in Friday the 13th franchise. After the first character bites the dust basically the rest decides to split it's like a kind of a joke on a trope on a horror movie and I don't know this movie just felt like it was feeding from so many horror movies like Hatchet, Friday the 13th and Wrong Turn, The Hills Have Eyes like it's something I've seen before I kind of knew what I was going to get with this movie and even though they have been feeding from these other movies I just kind of wish they would have brought something a little bit really new to the story because it's kind of like a mashup slash remake of other 
popular slasher American movies. The practical effects were actually pretty alright. I mean, I was really satisfied with the deaths in general. At the beginning, it felt like they were kind of trying to show as less as possible. Um, you would see people when they were already kind of dead. And then towards the end, it really got really brutal and gory and uh, they really brought it you know to what I was expecting and I was glad that in the end at least we got some really nice gore and some really nice violence. The kills were not particularly original in general there are many gory scenes many kills and I felt like for a lot of them they kind of recycled from other franchises so I kind of wish we would have seen something new that's kind of I think my whole kind of critique to this movie apart from the score that I didn't really like. There's also one of the characters that keeps seeing flashbacks of something that, to be honest, was unnecessary. The flashbacks only made it more confusing, it only kind of bothered where they were placed, so I wish they wouldn't have done that, to be honest. All in all, the movie is just a nice kind of fun slasher for one time watch. I do recommend you to give it just one watch if you love slashers. Um, I did end up giving this one only two stars. Um, I thought, you know, the acting was nice, the gore was nice, but it was just nothing really original. They even left the movie with an open ending, so I guess they are being um, kind of optimistic. <laughs> about it. I know some people did enjoy it. I guess it depends where your expectations are. I just feel like it's a mashup of movies that I have seen a thousand times before. Um, most of the movie, I think all of the movie basically takes place on daylight, which is something nice in order to see all the gore and all the deaths. It's always nicer when we have daylight, so that's also a positive. <laughs> but yeah, only watch it if you are just in the mood for just a fun slasher. Now let's move to his house. This one just was released on the 30th of October on Netflix. So in case you missed you, I am here to tell you you should give this one a try for sure. So in this story, we are following families in Africa that are trying to flee the country because they are currently at war, so their lives are in danger. So they get a space in one of those overflown boats that are too full they travel at night it is too dangerous and too risky but they put their lives at risk and the lives of their loved ones because they are hoping of a better future at a safe country the movie is approaching horror kind of as a social commentary including refugees immigration and i have to see to say here that you know I think that Jordan Peele has opened this door to this new type of horror in which we are combining horrors of real life in which we are portraying stories of black lives and the problems with society and I so much appreciate what he did and I love to see movies made like this and I think that we should get more movies like this one that is also why I encourage everybody to check it out. In the movie we follow a couple that after traveling in this boat overnight they did make it safe to England and they are being granted asylum but you get to see at the very beginning how bad they are treated how cold they are treated and they always assume the worst out of them and they basically have to respect a certain set of rules they're being given this house where they can live inside um, but they are not free they still have not been granted freedom which is something insane if you think about it that people are just not able to go anywhere they have no freedom they have to stay in this house so they're placed in this house in a poor neighborhood and everybody kind of looks and acts a little bit sketchy you kind of have the feeling the vibe something's wrong in that neighborhood and also the husband starts to think he's hearing and seeing things inside of the house, inside of the walls, like they're living with something else in that house. We do have a couple of jump scares, but there are also other very scary, creepy visuals, you know, disturbing images that just come at unexpected moments, which is what makes the horror in this movie work. The film, it is very rooted in grief and loss and trauma, and it is also based kind of our main character's PTSD after having to flee the country in the conditions that they had to leave because of war, seeing their families being killed, and they kind of 
this past is still haunting them and there is something with them that it's just not leaving. They also have a little bit of survivor's guilt because obviously not everybody in the boat made it safe to England. Um, I have to say this movie was basically a super intelligent new take on your typical ghost story, your typical haunted house story. It was just done very differently which I really appreciated. I also love to see a little bit of African beliefs and legends kind of merge a little bit into the story. The acting was great. Like the movie was definitely very strong compared to the last horror movies that Netflix has been releasing at least the last couple months. I really really enjoyed this one. This is a full-on different fresh modern horror movie and I really really appreciate that they did this one. Um, you know and it was just a different experience that's why I would recommend this one to everybody I did give it 3.5 stars I really really enjoyed it and like I said I think this is a must watch for everybody all right guys I hope that you enjoyed my spoiler free reviews on these two movies let me know down below if you've already checked them out or if you are planning to let's talk about some horror and netflix do you think they're doing a good job yes no let's talk about it in the comments thanks so much for watching please give the video a big thumbs up for support and if you want to follow me on other social media as always the links are in the description box down below and i hope to see you all in the next coffee time bye